Chapter 11 Man and Natural Environment In the previous standards, we have obtained some information about our environment. While studying the different continents, we have discussed the environmental issues in those areas. In this chapter, we shall study the environment further. Environment means the surrounding conditions that affect the lifestyle of living things. It includes biotic and abiotic components and all the forms of energy. Our surroundings include natural as well as man-made things. Human life gets affected by the environment and, hence, we find differences in the human life in different regions. Natural Environment All the components which come into existence naturally are included in natural environment. The landforms on the earth, the climate, water, minerals, soils, sunlight, as also plants, animals, etc. are all components of our natural environment. All of these affect the living world directly or indirectly. Cultural Environment In order to enrich his life, man has used natural resources and, in the process, he has brought about many changes in the natural environment. Human settlements, roads, farmlands, dams and many other things have all developed through this. All these man-made components are included in our cultural environment. Interactions in environment Varied types of interactions keep on taking place between the biotic, that is living, and abiotic, that is, non-living components of natural environment. All the biotic components depend on one another as also on abiotic components. We constantly breathe in and breathe out air. This means there is an interaction between us, that is, biotic component, and the air, that is, abiotic component. Similarly, plants using solar energy produce food through photosynthesis. This also is an interaction between the biotic and abiotic components. Ecology How many organisms live in a lake or a region? How do they obtain the food and energy for their survival? How are they interrelated? What changes take place in the abiotic components of the environment over a period of time? What are the effects of such changes on the biotic components? The science that addresses these and many similar questions is called ecology. Ecosystem The entire earth or a very small part of it can be studied as a part of ecology. Of course, this study relates to a biotic community, that is, it relates to the closely interrelated organisms in that region. A biotic community that is closely interrelated and that interacts with the abiotic components is called an ecosystem. Ecosystems are mostly recognized by geographical region. For example, aquatic ecosystem, forest ecosystem, meadow ecosystem, lake ecosystem, etc. Our earth is an all-inclusive ecosystem. On the other hand, even a lake or a small pond can also form an ecosystem. The biotic components in an ecosystem are classified as producers, consumers and decomposers. The consumers are further subdivided into primary, secondary and tertiary consumers. See figure 11.1 .1. Function of an ecosystem The sun is the main source of energy for the entire living world. Green plants produce food with the help of solar energy through the process of photosynthesis. Hence, 
they are called producers. Plants utilize a part of the food they produce for their own growth. They store the rest of it in the form of an energy. Plants are used by herbivorous animals as food. As a result, they get the organic energy stored by plants. Herbivores become food for carnivorous animals and for omnivorous like man. The energy in the form of food enters the body of the carnivores. The energy received by herbivores and carnivores is used for their physiological functions, that is, work. This is how an ecosystem works. See figure 11.2 The plants, that is, grass, are the producers, whereas the hair, that uses only green plants as its food, is a primary consumer. The hair becomes food for a snake. Hence, Carnivorous animals like snakes are called secondary consumers. The snakes become food for an eagle. Hence, the eagle becomes the tertiary consumer and the highest level consumer in this food chain. Worms, insects, bacteria, fungi, molds, etc. decompose the remains of dead animals. Hence, they are called decomposers. Through decomposition, the organic matter in the bodies of animals is turned into inorganic matter which gets mixed in the soil. Through this process, the inorganic matter again become available to plants in the form of nutrients. Energy Transfer Food Chain With the help of solar energy, producers produce food. Food is energy. This energy gets transferred through producers to primary, secondary and tertiary consumers to decomposers and finally returns to the environment. This completes the energy cycle. This sequential transfer of energy in the form of food is called the food chain. Levels of food transfer are called trophic levels. Food web. A consumer can obtain his food in different ways. As a result, multiple food chains come into existence in an ecosystem. Different food chains get connected to form a food web. Such food webs are shown in 11.3 below and 15.2 in the chapter 15. The study of food chains and food webs can help us understand the functioning of ecosystems. Food Pyramid In an ecosystem, as energy is transferred through different levels, some of it is lost at each level. Due to this loss, while moving from producer to different types of consumer, there is a decrease in the energy level. Therefore, at each trophic level, the number of organisms and the amount of biomass decrease. If one attempts a diagrammatic representation of this process, the diagram appears like a pyramid. It is called food pyramid. See figure 11.4. If the number of organisms or quantity of biomass at any level in the pyramid is increased or decreased, it has its effect on the organisms at other levels. Environmental Balance If the number of organisms and biomass is in the proper proportion at different trophic levels in a region, the environment in that region is said to be balanced. This balance can get disturbed due to natural hazards or by human intervention. Using his intelligence, man has made use of different components of the natural environment for his own benefit. With the help of science and technology, he has created a cultural environment. While doing so, he has cleared thousands of hectares of forest land. As a result, the environmental balance in such areas was disturbed. 
This imbalance in the environment has adverse effects on all of its components. Though man is more intelligent than other organisms, he also is a component of the environment. Man alone has the ability to bring about changes in the environment. Therefore, we must realize that it is the duty of a man to protect all the components of the environment and make judicial use of natural resources.